Well, hey there guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we've got part nine of our Toys and Joys dump truck and pup trailer build. Well, it's hard to believe that we are actually at part nine. Uh, we've made some great progress here on the model, guys, but it's basically still just a chassis. These model builds are slow, so don't think this is going to be just a weekend project for you. This is one of the ones that's going to take some extended hours and some extended time, and that's okay. It's a great time. We've got a lot to cover today, guys. I don't want to talk much more, so let's head over to the bench and get today's build started. Well, we're going to start off this week's build by making a couple of the smaller pieces that we neglected to make earlier. And that would be these four steps and the upper step mounts as well as the lower step mounts. Now, for both the upper and lower step mounts, we're going to need some 3 16ths of an inch thick stock. And I have this piece of walnut here. It's just a piece of scrap I had up in the rack. But as well for the steps, we're going to need some 3 32nd of an inch stock. Now for that, guys, I've just taken a piece of maple and I'm cutting on the outside so that the off cut is the 3 32nd of an inch. Cutting thin stock like this between the fence of the blade is just a dangerous game. So cut it on the outside of the blade, let it be the off cut. Once we get that done, I'm just going to rip it into half inch wide strips as per the drawing. We're going to change to a fine cross cut blade in the table saw and then using our small parts cutting jig, we're going to cut four pieces that are two and an eighth inches long. And that would be our four steps made. Now we want to move on to the brackets. Now for this piece of walnut, um, I didn't really want a dark walnut for these brackets. So this is a piece of the sapwood, which is a little lighter color of walnut. Hardwood, which is closer to the center of the tree, is darker. So if you ever get walnut that looks light like this, yeah, it's still walnut. It's just closer to the bark called the sapwood. Anyway, a uh, little lesson there on, on walnut for you. But what we need to do is we need to make these brackets, the lower step mounts and the upper step mounts, they both measure 3 16th of an inch by 3 16th of an inch. So the very first thing we're gonna do is one strip off of this will be more than enough to make all of the brackets. So I'm gonna take this over to the table saw and I'm going to rip a strip off of this 3 16th of an inch wide. Well, for our brackets, we need four pieces for the lower step mounts that are one and three eighths of an inch long. And I have just cut them using our small parts jig. And we need four pieces that are five eighths of an inch long. Now that's a little small to work with. So I've actually cut them to be one inch long again using the small parts jig. Well, what I've done now is I've taken a piece of 1 8 thick hardboard and I have cut a 1 and 3 8 diameter circle just over at the scroll saw. And you may be wondering what this is for or why 1 and 3 8. Well, 1 and 3 8 is the measurement that I got when I took the measurements of this groove right here on my tanks. So this is representative of that curve or that arc because as we see here on the prints, it says sand to fit on both of these. Well, we're not gonna do it just blindly. This is a marking template. So this is gonna be very hard to show on, on the camera because it is walnut and it's so small, but I have marked the length here at five eighths. I have marked three eighths of an inch up from that mark. In other words, a quarter of an inch from the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to place our circle here, our marking template, aligned with the very corner of our piece. And as well with that mark at one quarter of an inch, we're going to line it up very carefully. And we're going to mark out this arc. Just like that. And guys, all we're going to do is take this over to the oscillating drum sander and I'm going to sand this one section here off and then using our little miter box, I'm going to cut this to length and we're going to do that for all four of our brackets. These ones here, the lower step mounts, 
these are just a little different. And in order to mark the arc or our one and three eighths circle on these ones, for starters, we want to measure in from one end three quarters of an inch. That will be one edge of our circle or our arch. And we'll just place one little mark there. Now, if we scale off the drawing, the lower half of what is left of this piece after that arc is drawn, it is one eighth of an inch. So we're gonna mark one eighth of an inch down from the bottom. And that is where we're going to sand. So we're gonna place our uh, template here up against that mark at one eighth of an inch and up against the mark that we made at three quarters. And we're gonna trace around our template. It's a little awkward, I know, but the results will be worth it. So we're just gonna mark this here. And this one too will be sanded at the oscillating drum sander. So let's get all of those arches marked. We can finish up these and cut the smaller ones to size. Um, but once we get all of these arches marked on here, then we can turn around and start cutting or sanding these angles that we see here on the prints. So the first thing we're going to do is from this front curve right here, we're going to measure down 332nd of an inch. And we're gonna place a mark there. And then in from the end, we're going to mark 3 sixteenths. And at that point, guys, we're going to join those two points together. And there you go, there is that front angle. Now, if we measure back from the front here, one and three sixteenths, and measure down from the top at one sixteenth and join those two lines together. That is your back angle. Now guys, this is a lot of work to mark these out. So why do it? It's just to illustrate to you why it is that I make so many marking templates. I could very easily photocopy the pattern here on sheet five on the uh, miscellaneous sheet put it down on a piece of hardboard, cut it out, sand it, and I could mark every one of these in a matter of seconds and cut and sand them. But I'm gonna do this the hard way, and we're gonna sand those ends off, get these things set up, and then we're gonna glue our steps together. Well, we have all of our pieces done, and the first thing you wanna do before you get too carried away is you want to make sure that each one of these pieces fits in that groove. If it doesn't, now is the time to sand it. While we can sand it after the assembly, it is much more difficult to do. So guys, the setup for these and the glue up does not have to be difficult. A little bit of setup with some setup blocks here uh, and a straight edge can really make your life so much better and so much easier. So we know that the steps overhang from our brackets or from our mounts by 1 16th of an inch. And we can get that measurement by scaling off the miscellaneous drawing uh, 121-5, which is drawing five out of nine. We can scale off that. We see that it overhangs here 1 16th of an inch. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my steps, put it up here against a stop block on this side and a straight edge here, and I'm gonna sit a 1 16th of an inch thick spacer block or setup block right in here. Now I've done some measuring and the distance between my two grooves, just like it is on the drawing, is 1 and 3 eighths of an inch. So by doing a little bit of math, that means that I need, in order to center these brackets, I need 3 sixteenths of an inch on either side. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my brackets, the smaller ones here, you'll want to really be careful of the orientation. Make sure you know which way this is gluing on. And what we're gonna do is using a 3 16th thick block in the corner, just like this, we're gonna place our bracket right in here, 
tight up against the 3 16th, tight up against the 1 16th, just like that. And we're going to leave that alone. We're going to get a cotton swab and clean up the squeeze out. So we know that the gap between these or the distance between these in order to fit over here has got to be one and three eighths. So all I'm going to do is carefully take a spacer block. There's a one inch. Here's a three eighths. We're going to sit that right here like this. And we're going to take our second bracket, apply a little bit of glue and squish it up against all of those setup blocks. Now guys, we can carefully move these setup blocks out of our way now and put this one aside to dry. I've got a little bit more squeeze out to clean up there, but for all intents and purpose, this one is done. By using the setup blocks, uh, it's fantastic because you can very easily space out pieces, line them up squarely to your parts, and those are perfect. Those are right on the money. There is, there is no deviation from anything, and we can just test them here against our build, and they fit beautifully there. Look at that. That fits great. Okay, so we're going to put this aside to dry. We're going to glue up all the rest in the exact same fashion. Guys, even the larger brackets at the bottom, it's the exact same measurements, the exact same thing. The only thing I will caution you with is make sure that you don't mix up your setup blocks while you're allowing these to dry. And as well, make sure that the orientation of the curve on your parts goes the right way so that we can mount them to our tanks. Well, it's now just time to glue these in place. We have them all made up. You can see my smaller ones here, the larger ones here. Um, honestly, guys, the best thing to do here is just to hold your model to the side and line it up to what looks good. If you start trying to take measurements, putting on pieces like this, you're going to find that they end up twisting or getting strange. And while they may look uh, right as far as measurements goes, you put a, a measuring tape on it and it's absolutely perfect. Depending on if there's anything else that's off in your build, um, it can make it look very odd and very out of place. So go by eye on this one. Uh, that's my biggest advice here. Um, I've tried before to do measurements and they just don't work. Um, so glue those steps in place and then we can carry on. Well, we're going to be doing this engine block here that we can see on the engine page, page three of nine of the prints. Guys, if we look here, we do have dimensions, but we don't have any specific angles. I have written angles in here that I have measured, and that is what we're going to have to cut these at in order to get this engine block to fit properly. The very first piece we're going to cut is the base, and that is this little piece way down here. We can see it outlined with dotted lines along the top of the hood. This can be anything, guys. It can be any scrap of wood. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's never going to be seen. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a piece of 3 8 thick stock. It doesn't matter what species, uh, whatever we have up in the rack, and we are going to cut it to length, which in this case is three and three quarters of an inch. And from there, we're going to cut the 8.5 degree angles that we need in order to make this piece complete. And that would be the first piece of our hood assembly done. We can just put it here on the plans, line it up with those dotted lines, and we can see that this is perfect for what we need. Now, here's the thing. We now need to cut the rest of the pieces, and this is another game of angles. While it doesn't appear to be so here on the drawing, this front cut right here is an angle, this piece right here is an angle, this one, this one, even the slope right here is an angle. No matter how you look at it, we're looking at angles. Um, I've measured this one here at six and a half as well as this side because the ends are parallel. They have to be the same degree angle. And the same with this here. These pieces are parallel 
So the angle here is eight and a half. Not mentioned on the plans, but it's a good idea to measure and double check. Guys, I don't even mess around. I use a digital gauge to, to measure all of these angles. So I set my um, 90 degree actually at zero. This represents a square cut on the table saw. And then if I adjust it here, to my angle to uh, line up with our prints. And we can see that that lines up perfectly at eight and a half degrees. So that's what I would set my table saw fence or the tilt of my blade to. So um, you can either use this or you can do it manually with a protractor, whatever works for you, but measure these angles and don't be afraid, as I've said many times, to write on your plans. These are your plans. Make them easier for you to read. So the next thing we're going to do is cut a couple pieces of three quarter inch thick. In my case, cherry. I want the cab of the truck to be cherry. I'm going to cut it oversized and I'm going to rip a couple pieces that are two and three quarters, possibly even three inches wide. And what we're going to do is I'm going to cut it extra long. It says here three and three quarters, but I'm actually going to cut it longer than that, possibly even to four and a half inches. So let me get those two three quarter inch pieces done. So the next thing that we want to do is I want to cut this eight and a half degree angle right here on the ends of our three quarter of an inch thick pieces. Guys, all we're going to do for this is I'm going to set my miter fence at eight and a half degrees and we're going to run this through using the miter fence and our blade raised above the table because it's only about two and three quarters of an inch thick. The blade has no problems handling it. Once we get that done, we're going to make sure that we check our angles to make sure that they're parallel. You're going to have to adjust your piece here and we're going to cut it so that the overall length edge to edge is three and three quarters. And the last thing that I've done is I have cut this six and a half degree angle. All I've done guys is measure here. You can see that we have two and 11 30 seconds. This is a quarter inch Thick. It shows that up over here. So two and 11 30 seconds minus one quarter inch gives us two and three 30 seconds. I've just measured up from the bottom two and three 30 seconds of an inch and then cut it at a six and a half degree angle, which I measured off the prints. So now we have our base piece and we have both our um, left and right sides. The last thing that we need to do is make the top and then I'll show you how it all goes together. And that's this piece right here. It's a simple matter of following the dimensions here, guys. Um, eight and a half degree angles on the sides. However, this piece right here, the back angles front and back, it's kind of a tricky piece. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut these angles here first. They are six and a half degrees. We will cut that from an oversized piece. It's four and a quarter inches long. This is way, way too wide uh, to be able to do it with the method that we've been doing with the miter fence. So we're going to have to tilt our blade at six and a half degrees. When it comes to mitering stuff like this, guys, and using the tilting of your table saw blade, I have found nothing better than the digital tilt box by Beale Tools. So um, you can check those out if you want. There's all kinds of knockoffs as well that work, that give you the digital angle of your blade and they work just as well. But tilt your blade at six and a half degrees, paying attention to your angles here to make sure you've got them both the same way and that the ends are parallel. And then we can, once we get it cut to length like that, then we can cut these eight and a half degree angles and that can be done using your miter fence. And what you end up with is something like this. Now you may notice that there are pencil marks here. You can see them just scribbled on there as well as here. There's a pencil mark. This is nothing more than me just scribbling exaggerated angles of the way that the cuts go because I didn't want to make a mistake. It gives me a reference while I'm at the table saw. Um, so there we go. This is this piece pretty much done. If we want, 
we can put this together with elastic bands and just compare it with our drawing. We can hold it up uh, and compare and make sure that it is the right size. And now is the opportunity to change something if it's not. Well, I now want to glue these together, but we don't want to glue them all at once and clamp them because as soon as we clamp this and put pressure with the glue, this is going to try to do this. It's going to try to squeeze apart. So what we're going to do is use a straight edge. We're going to place our pieces up against our straight edge, making sure that they're aligned the way we want them. And we're going to glue these in place one at a time. We're going to glue this one here. We're going to be checking it all the way along to make sure that it's square. And once we get the sides glued on, and we're happy that the assembly is square, then we can glue our top on. It's a bit of a longer process, but you'll get much better results. Well, while I'm waiting for my engine assembly to dry up, there's more to do with this. We're going to start making the frame for our grill, our grill frame on the same page as our engine block. So out of some scrap quarter inch thick maple, I have cut the pieces that we need. Now, what I have done is I have cut them so that they're all just square pieces. We're going to do the shaping afterwards, after we get this glued together. So the very first thing that we want to do, we're going to give all of these pieces a light sanding. And I do mean a light sanding. And then we're going to use our flat edge here or our straight edge. And we're going to get these glued together. We can see here on the prints, it shows exactly the orientation that they go together. But we'll also take note here that it shows this 1 16th of an inch at the bottom and shows the entire length of the piece here of this side upright as 2 and 5 sixteenths. Well, if we add a sixteenth to that for this small little detail at the bottom, that's two and three eighths. So I've actually cut them slightly longer, as well as this bottom brace here, which measures a quarter of an inch. If we add that one sixteenth that we see at the bottom there, that's going to give us five sixteenths. And that's how wide I've cut it. The top piece is three eighths of an inch. So we're going to glue all of these together in a square orientation. Guys, make sure it's square. Get a square on there, test everything, uh, and get this frame glued up. And while we're waiting for that front frame to dry up, we can now even up any uneven edges that's on our front engine compartment using our sandpaper attached to three quarter inch thick MDF. Well, if there was any uneven edges here, they are all straightened out now. Um, guys, don't use a power sander for this. It will distort the side of sidewalls of your um, engine compartment. You're much better off to take it nice and slow with the sandpaper mounted to the MDF. So with this sanded and these edges here nice and flush all the way across, we're going to take this over to the router table and I'm going to route a quarter inch radius or a quarter inch round over here on both of these top edges of our engine compartment. Now guys, we still have on this frame this little 1 16th by 1 8th inch rabbit all the way around that we need to put in the front frame of our grill frame. So we're just going to do that over at the router table. We're going to use a sacrificial fence and get this routed up. Guys, you want to be careful when you're routing this. Do not hold this with your hands. Um, just in case the glue joint lets go, this thing will just blow apart. Let the router have it. Do not have your hands anywhere near it. Make sure you're using a push block. And the little edge indentations, 1 8 by 1 16, they can just be hand sanded, guys, or use a file. For now, we're going to put this aside. We're done with this. If you've done the quarter inch routing on your engine frame, you should have something or your engine compartment. Rather, you should have something that looks like this. And we're just going to sit this in place. We're not going to glue anything in just yet because you never know when something might change or not fit right. So there is our engine compartment and our grill will sit right here like this. 
However, we still need the interior of the grill. Um, honestly, guys, if we look here on the print, um, sheet three of nine, we can see the grill trim making 13 of these and gluing them in place. One sixteenth of an inch by three thirty seconds of an inch. And they get mounted on top of this grill back, um, which is one eighth thick material. Guys, what an absolute nightmare. Um, I, I've never been a fan of this kind of construction. So much like with anything, with any pattern, not just toys and joys, if you don't like it, well, we're not going to do it, are we? Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make the grill in one piece. And what we're going to need for that is a piece of 3 16 thick walnut. And once again, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for this week's show, guys. Um, the model's looking great. We've really brought it up to the next level. It looks like a little more than just a chassis now, which is actually nice for me because I was getting tired of looking at the chassis. Either way, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the content up until now. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have a fantastic audience base, and I'm hoping that you're going to consider becoming a part of it. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the content today. I hope that you've got a set of these plans for yourself. The links are in the description. I hope you're following along and making your own build. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. But more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.